You think Einstein walked around thinking everyone was a bunch of dumb shits? Wow, 12.15, you're early today. April, there's no paper in the printer. So? April, you know Spanish, right? Tu tentieras en tu trabajo porque tu eres infeliz en tu vida personal. Oh, good. Excellent. My mom's Puerto Rican. That's why I'm so lively and colorful. Hello, I'm April Ludgate. I like people, places, and things. You get on this terrific TV show in a role that just was perfect for you, mm -hmm. this great role as April in Parks and Rec. And so I'm just curious, how did that happen? How did you get that part? It's a weird like series of little things that happened, but, but that specifically was because I, I don't even know where, how to start, but basically I came out to LA because I was like up for Judd Apatow's movie Funny People, mm -hmm. which I got, but mm -hmm. like, he was trying to cast a completely unknown comedian. That's a whole different story, but mm -hmm. where he wanted to cast a stand-up comedian, and I wasn't doing stand-up, but I was doing improv and sketch comedy at UCB. Right. Um, but I like, I basically like pretended to be a stand-up to get that part or whatever, and then Allison Jones was casting that movie, and I didn't have an agent at the time, but I because I made it up the ranks of the audition process for that, I, I flew out to LA for one week, to do a chemistry read with Seth Rogen. And then while I was in LA, Allison Jones was like, would you mind going on a couple other meetings? And how do you feel about that? And I had no idea what was going on because I'm like, this is crazy. I was like, you know, I had nothing going on for me. Like in New York, I was like doing comedy stuff, but I was like, sure, like I'll go to whatever meeting you want, lady. I don't give a shit. And then, <laughs> and then, so she like, <laughs> Basically, said, she was like, "This is infuriating." Any actor out there? I know. There. Believe me, I know. There's so many believe starving me, actors out there. Like, I'm sorry, I'm Allison Jones, a top casting director. Would you go on a few big time reads? <laughs> hey, lady, I don't know. I got nothing to do. I don't okay, give a shit. First of all, <laughs> fuck off. Fuck I was off. Kidding. Yeah, I know. Second I know, of all, I know. Allison Jones changed my life. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she was like, "I'm gonna send you on these couple meetings or whatever." One of them is with the creators of The Office, and. The office was on the air at the time. And mm -hmm. It was huge, and so I was like, "Yeah, like I'll go meet the office people. I don't give, give a shit, lady." <laughs> um, and then, and so, and so, but I was in LA for the first time, so I was like, "LA, like I was wearing jean shorts, like mm -hmm. I was like, I don't, I didn't realize the weight of that meeting." And then, so I went to the set of the office. It was like somewhere in the fucking valley, or mm -hmm. I don't even know where I was. But all I remember is like I went into. I think it was Mike Schur's office. No, we wrote the part for Aubrey because Aubrey, um, Allison Jones, who is uh, along with Nancy Perkins, was casting our show, called me and said, you gotta meet this, I just met this girl and she's the weirdest person I've ever met. <laughs> And so then like, like seemingly about 11 seconds later, Aubrey Plaza showed up in my office and for an hour made me more uncomfortable than I've ever been. <laughs> <laughs> like mostly just by not saying anything, but just by like kind of staring at me with a look that was like, simultaneously like, you're old, and like, I don't like you that much. And that was what I was getting. And then Greg came in and he did the, she did the same thing to him. And then she left and I immediately just sat down and wrote a scene in which Leslie, it wasn't a character in the pilot as it stood at that moment, but I just wrote a scene where Leslie was trying to like, get a young sort of like college age intern to do something and the college age intern made Leslie feel the way that Aubrey had just made me feel. <laughs> and we just, we didn't really even, we just like called NBC and we're like, we're, we're gonna do, we're gonna put this character in and this woman is gonna play it. It was, the character was designed around the real human being. And she is obviously, she's different than her character mm -hmm. in many ways, important ways, but there are also a lot of similarities. <laughs> I don't remember any of that. <laughs> <laughs> and Michael Schur, one of the executive producers on Parks and Rec, describes his introduction to you, which is that he call, got a call from the casting director, Allison Jones, mm -hmm. and she said, I've just met the weirdest person in the world and I'm sending her to you. <laughs> and he describes like having the most uncomfortable hour of his life. And then the minute you left, he wrote a scene for you. Like that was the story on stage. Yeah. Tell me about that meeting with Michael Schur from your side, because I feel like okay, I either don't... you're a genius or you're the luckiest person okay, in the world. I'm not a genius, first of all. And 
second of all, I don't even remember. The funny thing about that week was that I had no like idea what was happening. I would say it was luck that I was in the place that I was, which was nowhere in New York. I was had literally gotten fired from a waitressing job the week before, and I was struggling, not knowing what I was going to do. And my meeting was on the set of The Office, so I was psyched to be going to the set of The Office. Like, that's where I was. And I kept seeing the actors from The Office, like Mindy Kaling and BJ Novak, and people like walking by, and I'm like, oh my god, that, the, 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 those are the people in The Office. And he was like, that's because we're on the set of The Office. And I was like, this is crazy, dude. <laughs> and then he was, and then we were waiting for Greg Daniels, mm -hmm. and then Greg came in, and again, they hadn't, I don't, they hadn't written the pilot at that point. They were just talking about, the idea. they had Amy and they were talking about the ideas for the pilot or something. And then we, I don't know, like, I don't even know what I did in that meeting. Mike sure t says like, she was the weirdest person I ever met. I wasn't being weird, okay? I don't even know what I was doing, but Greg came in and then, you know how weird Greg is. And then yes, I do. Greg, and I like immediately just I don't even we literally started talking about the meaning of life. I don't even know what we were talking about. It was like we were high or something. Like he came in and he was like, What happens after you die? I'm like, Okay, this is what I've been saying. I don't know, dude. Like, what do you think? He wasn't making a lot of eye contact. And I just remember he was like, I don't know. And I was looking at him and we were just I was like, This guy is fucking really weird. And then we were talking and then Mike was just watching it like what am I watching here? I was just looking out in the hallway trying to see who was walking by because I saw like at one point like Mindy Kaling walked by and BJ Nova Novak or whatever and I kept being like oh my god like just f people on the office like I was so psyched to and I didn't realize the weight of what could have ha come out of that and also I think because I wasn't used to going on meetings like that and stuff I didn't know like the proto like how they were supposed to go down so I was kind of over sharing my opinions about his ideas and what I thought was funny and what I didn't think was funny. And I think maybe, I don't know, because they were just still figuring out what the show was. They hadn't written the script at that point. Like, they just liked my idea. And then he was basically, then he started telling me the idea for the show. And he was like, Amy's going to have an assistant and maybe she's going to be like this. And then I was like, that's a stupid idea <laughs> or something. Not really, but I was basically like, oh, like she should have an assistant that's like a college intern that's like really smart that is just doing it for credit and like hates everybody but like is good at her job but doesn't give a shit about it or something. I pitched him the character basically mm -hmm. and then he was like, uh, okay. And then, <laughs> um, and then I think, and then that was it. And then, <laughs> and then <laughs> I heard. <laughs> I don't know. That I'm pretty cool. sure that's what happened. And then I pitched him that, and then basically I found, that was it. And then I left, and I'm like, well, that was weird. And then basically a couple weeks later or something, they called me. They're like, you're you're in this show. And I think the original pilot that they wrote, the character's name was Aubrey. It was just Aubrey in the pilot. Right. In the original pilot script, which I have, I found it in my garage the other day, which was like blowing my mind, the character is named Aubrey. They wrote... The characters named Aubrey. They changed it to April right before we started shooting. So when you saw so. that original pilot script and they sent it to you and you see your name in it, I mean, what does that tell you? Like, what does that tell you about what you should be doing? At that time, things were so crazy for me that I was just like, just keeping my head down, just trying not to make a loud noise. Like, I was just like, at any moment, like, they're gonna, like, discover that I'm a complete fraud and I have no business, like, being on television. And then when NBC, I guess, was gonna sign off on me, they made me audition to play myself. Yeah. They were like, you gotta audition now. I'm like, to play myself? Like, right. I hope I get the part. Like, then I went in and did an audition where I was, I don't even know what I did, and then they changed it to April, and then that was it. And I'm like, great, I didn't even wanna be on TV. <laughs> trying to be in movies, bro. <laughs> well, uh, that's interesting. That's fascinating. When you got this part, and then you're yeah. off and running. You're off, off and running. running. I got that. I got that part. I got Funny People, and I got Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, directed Jesus. by Edgar Wright, in one week. Oh, my God. When does that happen? Man, I was in the right time, in the right place, in the right jean shorts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I was lucky. I was a lucky little waitress from Queens. I want to be your assistant. Really? 
You hate it here. So do you. I'll make sure you don't have to go to any meetings. If anyone comes to see you, I'll scare them away. Wait, April, if you had to choose between these two ties... You're hired. You have to schedule an appointment. Okay, how about now? Ron's not here. He's right there. I, I can see him. I'll let you know when he's available. I wanted to make fun of stupid people while I get drunk. My two true passion. Don't do it. I swear to God, I'm going to murder you in your sleep. I'm going to get a melon baller and scoop your eyes out and eat them. And your congressman uncle's going to have to buy you a dog to drag your eyeless face around. Do you understand me? Do it. If you don't want to donate, then don't. Oh, by the way, I'm calling from inside your house. 